Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com. We're here with Elwood Francis, guitar tech for the legendary Billy Gibbons, and we're about to check out the rig that he's using live with a ZZ Top. So, Elwood, you want to start by showing us the guitars? Okie dokie. Here is the, the infamous fur guitar. We, this is the, okay, we have two rigs. We have an A and a B rig. This is the A rig. So this is the A rig fur guitar, which is, as you can see, the Gretsch Bo Diddley. Uh, the B rig fur guitar is a Gibson Explorer. The standard issue, and actually it's a John Boland made guitar, made to Gretsch specs. Typical, your typical fur covered guitar. Everyone has one. Yep, of course. Standard fare. This is for, um, for uh, just got paid as open E. So there's two Les Pauls with really high action. to an open E with heavier strings for Billy, which is a gauge of eight. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the first Pearly Gates, the Gibson prototype. This is the first one, and we use it actually for the spare because it's really heavy. The main guitar is a pearly gauge that has been hollowed out and used new old stock Gibson parts, old Gibson pickups, and he had the headstock redone to read Gibbon's Lucky Mojo instead of Gibson Les Paul. And it's extremely light. But it started life as a normal Pearly Gates model. This is the new Billy Bo Pros. You can't really tell, but it's about a half of an inch smaller all the way around. And it'll fit in a regular uh, Stratocaster Telecaster case instead of the really big long uh, These are, once again, John Boland made with the flip-flop finish and the really uh, 13th floor elevators inspired artwork. I think it's made with, uh, this one's made of the stop tailpiece, the first one we've had like that, just because of the graphics. <laughs> Other than that, it's all new all-start Gretsch parts with a new TV Jones pickup. Same thing for the spare, this is spare for the main guitar. Same thing, Billy Bo Pro, John Bolin made, Gretsch specs, different colors. Uh, they've got the pinstripe, got the pinstripe in the big speed that we don't use. There's no, you know, it's just there to ensure that it won't be in tune. The era of the big speeds are over for us, I think. We've been using big speeds for about four or five years, and I'm glad they're gone. Harder to keep in tune? Well, I mean, I love them, but we use the gauge seven strings. And he doesn't change guitars all night. So I'm over here just going, just with my fingers crossed. Now we have a tuner in the back of the rack that if, if we did go out of tune, he could look at me and give me the eye and I can hit the button. And he can, only he can see the tuner, but he never does. You don't want to get the eye. Well, I don't mind getting the eye. If he's out of tune, I would like to get the eye. But if he's out of tune, he'll look anywhere but over here. For some, I don't know. The Encore guitar. Same thing, just different color flip flop paint. The 13th floor elevators artwork. I think it's just reversed colors. No big deal. We change guitars. We don't change guitars nightly, we change the round of guitars a couple times a year. We'll change everything, except the fur, yeah. So, is it like the same models, just different guitars? Do you yeah, change out the models? You know, we'll get different things, they'll have different arrangements here, different colors. Sometimes they'll be left-handed, and there's always something new. So they just change them all, because if he gets one, if he wants one new one, well, we need a spare and we need the encore. And then Dusty's got to have new bases, so yeah. it's a process. But we, yet yeah, we do it a couple times a year, and at least. And of course, he has so, so many guitars, the legendary yeah. collection. So is yeah. it all just coming out of that? Oh, I've, I bring empty cases because we fill them up as we go. When you swap them out, they're all new. 
Yeah, they're all new, and we go through the whole process. It's not a big deal. I mean, it, it used to be at one time, but no, it's not. Because we, he's, uh, he's really consistent with what he wants. I mean, he's as long as they're really light, we get them chambered. He's been into lately having the neck chambered as well as the body. Because he uses really light strings, 7s to 38s. So he's got this really light touch. So he only uses the 8s on the one with the open tuning? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the heavy strings. <laughs> What what is it about? Is it just he's got a light light touch? Yeah, he's just he's up there. He's barely touching it. I mean, because the settings, everything is real heavy metal setting. I mean, it's like bass all the way up, gain all the way up. There's like no treble, all mids. I mean, it's just muffles. But when he plays it, he just barely hits the strings, and it works for him. I have a hard time playing it in tune because if I put the guitar on, it's down to here. <laughs> And it's got sevens on it, and I have to bend over to hit a to hit a D chord just for it to be in tune. Uh, I struggle. So uh, you know, obviously, then he keeps the all the vintage instruments at home. Do those ever come out on their own? Yeah, sometimes. There's. I mean, he's not afraid to. I mean, the first tour I did with him, like '95, he brought out seven, 58, 59 Les Pauls and the fur guitar. I know, and that was my first, it was the first time I was around, I'm going, F can I even leave the stage left? I mean, what do I do with the yeah. guitars? All right, and all of his guitars are obviously set up with wireless units so they can do the struts. Uh, what are you using? Uh, let's see, the Samson UR5Ds. Been using them for about 12 years. And there's, I don't have a problem with them. I've got a whole bunch of them. And we're waiting for the next generation to come out because they say that wireless... You know, we're wireless going to go through the big change and everything. Well, they keep putting that off. So until they do, I'll keep using this. And the, and the sound is uh, good, consistent. It's consistent. And we, we're we really hung up on being consistent. Right. So cool. it works for us. And uh, what do we got uh, covering all of these? these are uh, just old vintage tobacco cans that I just cut open. And I've been, I was looking for a long time for things to put wirelesses in, because I really don't like that yeah. that black thing on the back. I thought about putting them in those little snack pack cereal boxes, but they didn't really fit this van, yeah. but this does. Uh, what are the straps? Let's see. God, uh, El Dorado. El Dorado custom made straps. All right, um, you want to show us then what we're using for amplification? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so our, it's really easy. It looks like a lot of shit, but it's, this is the main rig and this is the spare rig. If something ever goes wrong, I just go over to this rig. They just duplicate the Nothing, yes. Dare I say nothing's ever gone wrong. I've never, I plug this in and check it every once in a while. So I just have a couple loops that I trigger the, I trigger the effects, but there's, it's really not much. There's like the whole night on a full set, there's maybe four cues. So four songs with cues. So it's really nothing. Uh, the MIDI mouse, the real the secret to the rig is every guitar. The, every guitar has a tone it's supposed to reach because when we change guitars they have to be homogenous. So if we go to a telecaster to a Les Paul, the the gain all has to be the same. We want we don't want you to tell that he's ever played a Telecaster. So to do that, we took a picture, played a G chord with Pearly. We bring still bring Pearly out all the rehearsals. We take a G chord through this setting, gives us this curve. So that's what Pearly is. So that's that's the benchmark. So all we do, every time I get a new guitar, I play through this setting, a G chord, and see how off it is, because it always is, and we correct it with this. And get it as, you know, it's not perfect science, but it's guitar player science, so it sort of works. Uh, and it, and it, it makes everything homogenous, because we pick up, unfortunately, Billy likes the gain, <laughs> that this EQ provides so we we can make we can match the gain without having to we can keep all the wireless unity 
that's where we'll pick up the gain differences. We've tried different pickup boosters and things. This is the most consistent way to do it. It's, it gets a little noisy, but Billy likes noise, I think. It makes him let him know the guitar is on. So every guitar has the EQ setting, which you can see here written down everywhere. I can look, I can see where it is. So I hand him a new guitar and, and hit the EQ number, and that's it. Right. Everything will be as close as it That'll can. Match that up to, uh, Every, the pearly yes, the pearly game. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the setting on the JMP1? What is the setting on the JMP1? What is that? Uh, volumes 19, gain 18, excuse me. These go plus or minus six. So it's a bass all the way up, mid on two, <laughs> no present, no treble, minus presence. And that's the effects loop, so it's all signal with that. Yeah, he doesn't, we don't use treble. <laughs> no treble. And we also, what else do we do? This is for me, because this, we have a splitter in the back. I split my signal to wherever. I monitor through this. Uh, doesn't mean anything, I can just tell the guitar is on. Yep. The, we don't mic any on stage cabinets. Okay. Right now we're using, I think, some Magnetone 412s. Um, but we have two Demeter ISO box loaded with, what is it, a, an Eminence Governor in one and a Man of War in the other. And that's run off the power amps. Uh, one is run off that power amp, the other one's run off this Mojave Scorpion. Now the Mojave Scorpion is separate. It's always on, it doesn't see the EQ, it's set completely different, and it's basically there for when Billy turns down for the older songs, where, where there isn't as much gain as when he turns down, those jampy ones will not clean up. They get a lower, they're not responsive at all. They get a lower grind to them. So this amp comes in with all that. So he gets all that stringy stuff and he mix it in, mixes in really well with the Marshall. So is that kind of like uh, patterned after vintage Marshall, the Mojave? You know, it's, I don't know. It is EO 34s, but it's got, um, it's set up more like a high watt because it has the, uh, the high volume and the low volume for the EQ, but it does sound martially. It does sound martially. Are you using any particular microphones in the ISOCAST? Yes, we are. I'd never open them up and look. Uh, That's all right. I think some Hiles. Ta -da, ta -da. So you even have an extra one, right. along with the headless. Okay. Yeah, you knew that. I do. We use the the Billy Gibbons brand Dunlop strings, extra small. He has never broken a string since I've been here, wow. ever. And he uses sevens. Okay. What's, the full, what's the full line on seven? What is seven, nine, 11, 20, 30, 38. Yes, that's a skinny man. Yeah. Are, the, are the eights the same brand then? Yeah, yeah, okay. same thing. I, th I think they make this is up to a, way up to a 10. <laughs> I think you can get seven, eight, nine, and tens. I don't think they make them in elevens. Um, and of course, he's known for using some various pick materials, but I'm looking behind you, it looks like we got some regular picks. What, what is he using right now? Just his regular Jim Dunlop. He's been using these for about 12 years. I can't okay. get him to change. I think they're the gel, gel picks or something. They're really, they're really, oh. and they glow in the dark. I think that's what he really likes about So no more coins? No more coins, you know, and I've never seen the coin, but heard about the coin. I've heard about the coin. People bring me coins. Well, they all, you know, I've got a big collection of the fan-made coins, you know. So uh, well, that's, that's interesting. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah. And what's he using for slides? Uh, his Billy Gibbons brand Dunlop glass slide. Any any particular, uh, you know, cables, patch cables you guys like I'll to just, use? I'll make whatever cables, oh, yeah. you know. I'm not. I don't believe that cable bullshit. If it's I mean, have a good cable, I mean, you don't want to use something really shitty, but I solder my cables. I don't use those screw-on cables and, you know, Canary, Mugabe, whatever. I don't care. All right. Um, let's see. I, Peterson I, tuners, always. 
I do have a couple questions if you don't mind me pulling out my phone that some people wanted to know on Facebook. So let's see if you can help us out. I know, right? I've got a, I've got a question somebody wants to know if there's a, you know, any particular specification he likes for the height of the pickups. You know, he likes them really, he likes the magnets close and then we raise the pole pieces a little bit higher. He likes, but we don't get too high. It's, it's not, there's not an exact measurement. It's more like we do it visually and if it needs more, if we hear more, we do it more. But it's, no, it's pretty much set. We have, we have a way, it's, it's really weird how, you know, it's almost gets non-verbal now because we've been using the same stuff. We get the same pickups from, from Tom Jones at TV Jones and they come exactly how we want. We get Seymour Duncan with the other, with the Pearly Gates pickups. How many guitars does he actually own? Jeez, you, you know this one. I don't, I've counted, got probably 12 years ago at the lockup, cause he's got guitars everywhere from what I understand. Just in ZZ headquarters in Houston, I count 12 years ago, just stage guitars, I counted over 450. 50 stage guitars stage just in one place. In one All place. right. And that was Dusty's basses. 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years ago. <laughs> and that was just stages. And, you know, I can't keep up with them. I mean, really can't. Yeah, being that you bring out, I mean, yeah, looking yeah. about, you know, five, six new guitars a few times a year. Yes, exactly. Well, it'll be 15 guitars a year of, a, easily. And that's just on the road. And that's just, just yeah, on the road. That's, I mean, we come back from Europe, I come back with so much shit. I mean, it's crazy. As soon as I came back with more guitars than we had, I would carry two back because we couldn't fit them in any more cases. So, so does he go looking for guitars everywhere he goes? They find them. I mean, they find them. We do look. I mean, we got lots of people we always visit, and he's always got people doing things. He's always working on new designs. Well, thank you very much for taking some time to show us around the world here. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.